is on molecular geometry and VSEPR theory. So VSEPR stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. And what this means is that pairs of electrons are going to repel each other and shift, shift the shape of the molecule. So right now we've just been drawing our Lewis structures and disregarding the fact that electrons really do take up more space than those electrons that are in a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond. And so the reason that this happens is because electrons are going to repel each other because of their negative charge. So we have two electrons that are together and they have this negative charge, but they're not going to want to sit real close to each other. They want to fan out. And when they fan out, they're going to push those bonded atoms away from those electron pairs, and it's going to kind of tweak the way that the molecule sits. So therefore, our shape of our molecule is going to minimize the repulsion of shared and unshared pairs of electrons around the central atom. And now there's a list of shapes that's located on the next page of your note packet handout, and you're going to want to refer to that, specifically the lines that list the number of lone pairs and the number of bonded atoms to the central atom to be able to determine the shape. So as we go through our examples, we have um, our example here of methane, and the first thing we want to do is draw our Lewis structures. Now you've spent the last day, two days, drawing Lewis structures. So now we're going to say, okay, you can draw the Lewis structure for methane. It's CH4, so carbon has its four electrons, four hydrogens, so four more electrons, eight valence electrons. I go ahead and draw it in and fill everybody's octet. I notice that I have just my carbon in the middle, four bonded atoms around it, no lone pairs of electrons. So my, like I said, my Vesper shape depends on my number of lone pairs and my number of bonded atoms. So I have zero lone pairs, four bonded atoms. I look on my sheet and it says this is a tetrahedral. Now tetra means four, hedral is part of our shape, and so that makes sense that's a tetrahedral, there's four things coming off of it. My next example is ammonia. Now we have ammonium as one of our polyatomics. We get rid of one of those extra hydrogens, we have ammonia. This is that cleaning chemical that you have probably in your closets at home. Now ammonia is NH3. My N here has five valence electrons. Hydrogen is three, so I total them together, and that's eight. I go ahead and I draw my Lewis structure of N in the middle. My hydrogen's coming out, and it's extra pair of electrons here, my lone pair. Now this lone pair of electrons, according to my Vesper theory, these two electrons are going to take up more space than the single bond of my nitrogen to my hydrogen. And because of this, my shape of my molecule is going to minimize the repulsion of shared and unshared pairs of electron. And so what's going to happen is these electrons here take up this huge amount of space. And because of that, they're going to push these hydrogens down, and they're going to shift them down, so it becomes kind of like a... Like a um, triangle base here with these electrons at the top. And when it does that, and I've written this incorrectly here, but when it does this, we now have our one lone pair of electrons here. We have three bonded atoms on it. This becomes the shape of a trigonal pyramidal It's a trigonal pyramidal because you can kind of see that these hydrogens here have kind of made like a, like a pyramid base. If my nitrogen is sitting at the top and these hydrogens are coming down like they are a pyramid, and that's how it gets its name. So the base is a triangle and it makes like a pyramid with the electrons at the top. Taking up all of this space is all taken up by my electrons, forcing my hydrogens all to be further down. Now my next example is water. This is your classic bent molecule, your classic polar bent molecule. So water is H2O, as you all know. Oxygens have six valence electrons. Hydrogens have two valence electrons. Total is eight. I go ahead and draw my skeleton and fill in everybody's octet. Hydrogen just wants two. Oxygen has its eight. Hydrogen wants two. And then also I have two lone pairs of electrons. My lone pair of electrons here and my lone pair of electrons here. Now, you might think that maybe it would like to sit like this, but really it wants these hydrogens and these shared electrons here to be as close to each other as possible so they can take up the most space. So right now you can kind of see these pairs of electrons are taking up about 50% of that space 
if you look at the 360 degree region around my action molecule. But they want to take up more because they can really push these paired, um, these shared electrons closer together. And so what they do is they push these hydrogens as close together as possible. So these electrons here take up about 75% of the molecule. So it really takes up about this much for this guy. Another this much here. So these hydrogens only have about 25% of the total area around that oxygen. So with two lone pairs of electrons here and here, and two bonded atoms and my two hydrogens, the central atom, this is called a bent shape because this really is bent at almost a 90 degree angle. And so we're going to go through more examples in class. We'll end up doing a lab on this as well where we make our different molecules. But go ahead and practice the next couple of the examples that's in your handout, in your note handout here. And we'll go over them for our bell work uh, tomorrow at the beginning of class to see how you did. You always want to reference back to that sheet. Now you won't have it come test day, but by going through and starting to picture and see what these molecules look like, you'll be able to identify what the shape is.